what do you actually do to cultivate that joy? So you, you talk about having the, the truly deep heartfelt sense of joy. Um, and given that that's a thing that you've been putting energy into, and I can literally feel your joy, it's palpable. And it's like the dial, the, the dial just like keeps getting turned up. What do you actually do in a moment to moment basis to um, have that like embodied heartfelt sense of joy? Do you have a, a yeah, I, I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, it's everything we ever talk about. So it's truly is literally everything we've, everything we've talked about. I think it was with Dirk that we talked about the, the foundation and the high level. So I think absolutely fundamentally, we must focus on our fundamentals, eating, moving, sleeping, breathing, focusing, et cetera. And again, we say that all the time, of course, you and I and everyone in the community, but it, it, it is always the foundation. So when we are properly resourced, as Alexander would say about our kids, it's a heck of a lot easier to experience that joy. Our psychology is driven by our physiology. I believe that today more than I've ever believed it. Um, again, zest, boom, is going to be the driver of the ultimate eudaimonic joy. Then I also think that we have to be playing our game. We have to know, on a, no, we don't have to know with precision, but we have to feel like we're living a life in integrity with ourselves, which is why can't, uh, Maslow rather, what one can be, one must be. If we're leaving a ton on the court, and we're not really expressing ourselves and using those capacities that are clamoring to be used, there will be a part of us, a very healthy part of us, that is basically voicing its distress in the form of distress and that screechy sound in a car but that's, a, that's a, an indicator that we just need to do some adjustment and perhaps we need to either step up our game or even step it uh, you know, down in the sense of dreamer and doer style, connecting more, right? But I think it's the two things of, of the true frictionless, like when we get good at it, Dallas Hartwig and I were talking earlier this week and he was talking about how his uh, you know, physiology now and, and all the things that go into his energy and physique and whatnot are frictionless. He's not, he doesn't need to think about them a lot. They just work. So I think we get that and then we get a real sense of this is, this is what I'm here to do right now in my life. You connect those two things and then you take action and you know that this moment is the moment to be in integrity or not. You've closed the gap. And as I say all the time, when you get rid of that, how does that feel? Well, Aristotle called it eudaimonia. Seligman calls it flourishing. It's that sense. So anyway, I think it's everything we've ever talked about. Foundation, big vision, this moment. Um, and then when you're off, rather than saying something's wrong with me and I'm an idiot because I'm not perfect yet, you practice your philosophy, have the wisdom to know you're never going to be there, then the self-mastery to turn it around. And again, then it's weird. It's literally the plus three, minus one, could have gone minus one, minus minus one is now a plus one, plus three, and oh, I'm the person that made that happen, and that's way beyond joy. I don't, I don't know what the word is for that, but there's something there that's um, it's it's what we trained for, right?